I'm reintegrating um, back into society from uh, the Pyro Festival. Yeah. So I had a lot of good experiences with people, good classes and ceremonies and meditations. And I uh, was led through a nice breathing technique that I wanted to share too. Um, I wanted to share this uh, pretty simple breathing technique that uh, my friend was leading in his cacao ceremony at the festival uh, for integrating the heart and the mind. It's one of those uh, ratios from the Heart Math Institute, uh, Greg Braden's research. And basically, any time that you extend the exhale longer than the inhale, that's going to be more on the calming side because exhale is more of a calming effect and inhale is more of an energizing effect. So you're shifting that ratio, which is usually good for us. So, yeah, I broke out the uh, Osho Zen Tarot that we haven't used in a while. There's a lot of good wisdom in here for Miss Jennifer first here. Just uh, say when. When. Okay. Uh, I was having some conversations with people about how we all complete each other like puzzle pieces in the Aquarian age being the time when we're all equal and we share all this information and communication and connection. So this is the completion card. Mm -hmm. Puzzle piece that completes puzzle here. And it's also to, uh, to say paradoxically that we are complete in ourselves and we also complete a larger self, a larger whole. Here, the last piece of a jigsaw puzzle is being put into its place, the position of the third eye, the place of inner perception. Even in the ever-changing flow of life, there are moments in which we come to a point of completion. In these moments, we're able to perceive the whole picture, the composite of all the small pieces that have occupied our attention for so long. In the finishing, we can either be in despair because we don't want a, the situation to come to an end, or we can be grateful and accepting of the fact that life is full of endings and new beginnings. Whatever has been absorbing your time and energy is now coming to an end. In completing it, you will be clearing the space for something new to begin. Use this interval to celebrate both the end of the old and the coming of the new. Does that spark any resonance? Right. Well, I'm just in a transition phase, that's for sure. Right. End of the old phase. And yeah, uh, that's what the uh, the new moon in Sagittarius thing was, was talking about. Um, you know, starting new projects. And then we just passed that full moon when the new things are, things are completing and beginning again. The strawberry moon that was all orange on the horizon was really cool. So... Osho said, this is the way of Zen, not to say things to their completion. This has to be understood. It is a very important methodology, not to say everything means to give an opportunity to the listener to complete it. All answers are incomplete. The master has only given you a direction. By the time you reach the limit, you will know what is going to remain. This way, if someone is trying to understand Zen intellectually, they will fail. It is not an answer to the question, but something more than the answer. It is indicating the very reality. The Buddha nature is not something far away. Your, conscious, your very consciousness is Buddha nature, and your consciousness can witness these things which constitute the world. The world will end, but the mirror will remain, mirroring nothing. So I don't know if you're familiar with like Zen koans, you know, they're poetic sutras they're a lot of times they're like questions like um you know so they're not giving you the answer they're giving you the question to lead you to your own answer or just the contemplation of that uh so it's like the one that stands out in my mind is what 
Yogi Amandeep said to us several times during our training with him in uh, North India in the Himalayas. And he said, what is the sound upon hearing which the flower bloomed? It was just for us to contemplate that. What is the sound that made the flower bloom? And then the second part of it is, what is that sound upon hearing which that you bloom? Mm. Which is, I love the, uh, the concept, and the imagery of, you know, it's like you can't make a flower bloom. It just, you provide it the right ingredients and care. And then when it's ready, it happens. So it's this, you know, sometimes we're trying to like force things to happen in our lives because we have a certain amount of manifestation force. But um, really a lot of times we can just provide our energy and then wait or watch or allow for that. So any particular um, tension for you? Uh, I was having back issues, but I, I thank heavens the class on Friday kind of cleared it up a little bit. So it's better, but yeah, it's, overall I'm okay. And that, that resonates with me. What you just said, I came back from Florida and my, all my vegetable plants were blooming. They all yeah. are flat. So we were at the blooming stage. They're yeah. blooming. Then maybe I will, you know, yeah. get blooming phase. That's releases the fragrance, which is another, um, part of the analogy that's like the essence the beauty of something that is compared to love the way that it blossoms and the fragrance our essence is revealed when it's ready to do so sounds good we'll keep keep things uh, maintained and feeling good for you and miss cheryl any uh mm -hmm. tensions for you no, I'm, you know, I'm always pretty, pretty good after Vita's class. I think just, you know, today we, we've had hazy day mm. here because of the smoke and pollution from the Canadian fires oh. that are going on. Um, I, at first, we couldn't figure out why it was hazy, you know, um, and then it came on the news about, I guess there's like 160 uh wildfires going on in Quebec and Montreal and that air is pushing it down this way and towards the East Coast. And it's just been kind of hard to breathe when you're outside. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wondering that too. It's like when the sun was setting, it was mm -hmm. orange all around the horizon. And I was like, there was clearly like a low cloud haze. But then the fact that it was there for the moon and the next night and like last night when we we're on the beach watching the sunset and it it disappeared like you know a ways from the water and then and i was like there's some kind of smoky smoggy haze because that would be pretty coincidental for the clouds to be like that that long so yeah the, our breathing technique will be good for that that's what we're gonna start off with there Okay. So I think you've seen this one before. This is the uh, ordinariness. Mm -hmm. The farmer mm -hmm. uh, collecting the flowers. It's the eight of rainbows. It says, this figure walking in nature shows us that beauty can be found in the simple, ordinary things of life. We so easily take this beautiful world we live in for granted. Cleaning the house, tending the garden, cooking a meal, the most mundane tasks take on a sacred quality when they are performed with your total involvement with love and for their own sake. Without thought of recognition or reward, you're facing a time now when this easy, natural, and utterly ordinary approach to the situations you encounter will bring far better results than any attempt on your part to be brilliant, clever, or otherwise extraordinary. Forget all that making headlines by inventing the latest widget or dazzling your friends and colleagues with your unique star quality. 
The special gift you have to offer now is presented best by just taking things easily and simply, one step at a time. So Osho said, sometimes it happens that you become one in some rare moment. Watch the ocean, the tremendous wildness of it. And suddenly you forget your split, your schizophrenia, you relax. You're moving in the, Himalaya, the Himalayas, seeing the virgin snow on the Himalayan peaks. Suddenly a coolness surrounds you and you need not be false because there is no other human being to be false to. You fall together or listening to beautiful music, you fall together. Whenever in whatsoever situation you become one, a peace, a happiness, a bliss surrounds you, arises in you, you feel fulfilled. There is no need to wait for these moments. These moments can become your natural life. These extraordinary moments can become ordinary moments. That is the whole effort of Zen. You can live in an extraordinary life in a very ordinary life. Cutting wood, chopping wood, carrying water from the well, you can be tremendously at ease with yourself. Cleaning the floor, cooking food, washing the clothes, you can be perfectly at ease because the whole question is of you doing your action totally, enjoying, delighting in it. And that's the quality that meditation teaches us because often we're just sitting or in some other posture, relaxing and being still and I, the, the way that it comes to me in my mind is, it's like paradise. That's the word that comes. It's like there's a shift of consciousness of the perception of the world from mundane into this, you know, you're still in the same situation, but it's uh, like everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have a little something to sit up on and your cushions, anything you would like gathered. Stretching out my legs, shaking them out a little bit. So we can sit comfortably and lift up the heart, roll the shoulders. And let's let the shoulders go loose down the back. Hands resting in somewhere comfortable on the lap or the knees. Just relaxing with each breath. Put this on, musicians. So just watching your breath now. And each exhale, relaxing a little more, softening the face, the jaw, the shoulders going down through the belly, through the hands, through the legs, to the feet, the weight mostly resting into the sitting bones, so we are centered, grounded, and nicely relaxed. Notice the breath filling up through the low belly to the heart. Deepening gently. And this breathing technique of integrating the heart and the mind is simply a five second or five count inhale and an eight count exhale. So I'll lead you through a few of these and let you count it after that. So first we exhale the breath out, begin an inhale for one, two, three, four, five, and exhale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhaling again for one, two, three, four, five, Exhaling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Allowing those little pauses and inhaling for one, two, three, 
four, five. You can hold for a moment with no tension, and then exhaling, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And take a few more, nice and slow. Let's take another long inhale together and hold. You can do a little bit of throat constriction as you exhale slowly. Joining the palms and rubbing. And as we release the hands, let's bring left hand to the heart center, right hand to the navel, and feel the flow of breath, expanding the belly and the heart, giving ourselves self-compassion, self-blessing to all aspects of the self, body, mind, spirit, the emotions of the heart, where true feelings, true gratitude, our greatest bliss is there, can't be thought of, only felt. And to the belly to balance our energy levels, ego, willpower, We'll take one more deep inhale, hold this breath, send your love to the body, mind, spirit, and sigh it out. Twice more, inhale, sigh all the breath out, once more, nice full inhale, and a sighing all that out, <sighs> then joining the palms at heart center, thumbs to the breastbone, and today we can just do our three vibrations of Aum, which is Ah with the mouth open, and as you close the mouth it'll naturally go through all those sounds which represent different vibrations for different chakras, different modes of consciousness. Ah, oh, ooh, mm. and just meditate on that vibration. Rolling the eyes up to the third eye, we'll take a deep breath to begin.
Inhale. Hold the breath. With no tension, feel your energy, feel the vibration. When your exhale comes, just relaxing the hands down and observing the consciousness, how you feel. Inhale, the arms up, and just exhale straight down the sides for a few more times with deep breath and complete exhales. Do one more. Hold at the top with the palms together and stretch all the way up and back. You can inhale a little more. See if you can grow a little taller from sitting bones to fingertips. And then to the third eye as we exhale down through the heart and relax. And we'll stretch the legs out straight. Hands down to the mat beside the hips. Gently bouncing the knees, toes drawn back. And pushing through the hands so we have a long spine. I'm just going to take a few more breaths to get a little further so you feel the stretch. Then taking the palms and massaging all the leg muscles, including the hips, best you can. Get all of these you can rub the kneecaps if you get any tension there. And to the torso, organs and ribs. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, around to the low back. Rub the palms and press the eyebrows up and out. And clear through the forehead, the temples down to the jaw joints, and under the eyes and outwards. Get a little ear massage and pull the earlobes gently. And massage around the rest of the ears for that stimulation for all of the organs and systems. And down your neck muscles. I'll squeeze the chaps. 
upper back a bit, if you can reach. Just clearing down the arms. And for the hands, which also have a lot of uh, distal correspondence to different organs, you can massage all through the different points of the fingers and palms. Give all those a squeeze and you can stretch your fingers. I do like this so I can get both hands at the same time. And downwards, it's good for our wrists. The other one is with the palm up, drawing the thumb back towards your body for that uh, external rotation. And once you get that, you can just shake it up. Let's bring the hands back behind the hips, feet flat for the windshield wipers. Loosen our hips and glutes a bit. And mindfully coming to tabletop for some gentle cat cow. With the palms flat, fingers spread. With an inhale, lifting the face. With the exhale, rounding chin to chest, navel in towards the spine. The pits of the elbows roll forwards and just flow with the breath, inhaling, rising. Exhaling, rounding the navel in. Got a couple more if you want to push a little further through the hands so you can extend the heart up and the spine up. And on your next inhale, rise up and hold. Exhale round and hold the breath out, navel all the way in. And coming back to center, we'll bring the knees a little wider apart. And if you have a cushion or bolster to go between your knees, you can do a supported child's pose. And try to walk your hands, try to get a long spine outwards. And I always will turn onto one side of the head so that the jaw and face can relax. We'll be here for a minute or so, so just letting it all go. Shoulders sink down, the hips are sinking down towards the heels or between the heels. Notice your breath. 
and send the expansion of that breath to anywhere in the body that might feel tight. down but start to push up the hands a little bit so you can remove any props and then we can go deeper if you need to bring the knees wider or the hips lower between the heels stretch the arms straight as you come down for a little bit deeper forward fold hip opener in the child's rest. Just a couple deep breaths here. And this will make room for our child's pose side bend. Walking the hands to the right side all the way until you feel the stretch in your left side body and you can also cross the left hand over the right hand interlacing fingers or the wrist for a little traction and then i'll give you a couple minutes to hang out here to relax and breathe into your ribs to get that nice expansion this breath you can keep your head relaxed down start to walk the hands back to center 
and to the other side, over to the left, until you feel a good stretch. And the finishing touch is the right hand over top of the left hand, interlacing gently. And once you're in your version, just relaxing from head to toe and being conscious of each deep breath so you can get the best expansion and if you keep the breath long and slow keep the nervous system relaxed as well Last breath, you can start to walk the hands back to center and keep the head relaxed as you start to walk the hands back towards you, rolling up vertebra at a time, head comes up last. Let's swing the legs back out straight, gently, hands press down and we bounce the knees. So we are getting pretty close to the summer solstice, the brightest, sunniest, fieriest times of the year. So we're actually going to do a little bit of uh, more active things than we normally do. If you can get your feet underneath you into the squat of Malasana. And if your heels don't come all the way down, you can try going wider apart with the feet. Hands in prayer, elbows inside the knees, extending a tall spine, and then breathing here. Especially if you breathe into the belly, you get some nice gentle opening for the hips and low back. Also, interlace the fingers and stretch the arms, palms out, rounding for the other version of the garland pose, Malasana, breathing here. Uh, 
and coming back to the prayer pose version as the hands come towards the heart spreading the knees apart lengthening there's also a little exercise you can do here which is bringing the hands down a little bit for support and mindfully lowering either knee down alternating just working through the range of the hips And through the feet, come all the way up to standing. I harness some of this sun energy with a little bit of standing power postures. Interlacing the fingers behind the back and drawing the shoulder blades together, opening and lifting the heart, breathing here. Extending the long spine outward, forward, and down in the forward fold. Breathing here and allowing yourself to deepen with every complete exhale as the navel draws in. We get some nice circulation to the brain, spine, sciatic nerve, the legs loosening every exhale. decompression for the low back so let's take one more inhale with the exhale releasing the hands to the shins inhale arch up halfway with flat back exhale fold down and twice more inhale up halfway and lengthen exhale fold softening the knees and last time inhale arch up and exhale, fold down and just hang loose, loose head, neck, arms and sway the torso side to side. Be a rag doll, hanging loose. Then we'll walk the fingertips along the floor to the right side into a forward folding side bend. Couple deep breaths here. When you're ready, walking fingertips back through the center to the other side, left side. Breathing here. Take one more inhale, and with the exhale coming back to center, hands to the shins, inhale up halfway, exhale fold side out, <sighs> inhale rise up all the way, palms together overhead, exhale to the heart. Now bring the feet wide apart, like several feet apart. And there's a thing that I like to do where you bend each knee and you kind of just go to either side till you feel the stretch. This is a thing in uh, Tai Chi. You go down, the rooster catches the snake, and uh, one of the teachers 
at Pyro Festival is doing this as a uh, lymphatic release technique, but it's just a nice way to get those stretches on both legs while feeling the shifting of your weight. Now that your legs are getting stretched, you may be able to go a little deeper, if that feels okay. All right. So then we'll come back to center, kind of toe heel the feet till you're back to shoulder width. And I've got one challenge posture for you today to harness some sun energy, which is the chair pose. So we've got the feet about hip width or a little wider. We're sitting back into the chair so the weight is back in your heels. And lift up the arms and just hang out and breathe here for 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, stretch, stand up straight and back, and exhaling forward, fold down. Crown of the head resting down towards the earth, and breathing. Hands to the shins, with an inhale, arch up halfway, with the exhale, fold. With your inhale, stretch up all the way, draw the palms together, and exhale to your heart. Just standing in your mountain pose, grounding through the feet, breathing deeply. Let's take one more inhale. And mindfully come down to a comfortable cross-legged, propping under the sitting bones if you like. I'm walking the right hand out to my right, left arm up. And I'm also going to tuck that top left hand behind my head so I get a little traction of rolling the elbow up and back. Breathing here. If the neck is uncomfortable, you can always turn it down a little more to rest it. This can allow you to go a little deeper in your stretch than we did in the child's pose side bend. So if you want to kind of just barely inch that bottom arm further or breathe a little deeper or you can stay where you're at of course and with an inhale stretch both arms up to the sky exhale Walking the hand out the other way, this is to the left. Top hand comes behind the head and neck. Rolling that top arm, elbow back. And breathing. Last couple of breaths, you can decide 
If you're not feeling the stretch anymore and you want to go a little deeper, or stay away. And with an inhale, stretch both arms up. And shake out the hands. Bring the hands to rest down on your knees. Roll the shoulders back. And let the shoulders go loose down your back. Chin towards the chest. Neck rolls to the right. Inhaling back. Exhaling down through the chest with shoulders soft down the back. Face and jaw loose. Generally, eyes closed. To free yourself from distractions so you can just sense your intuition, your body as you flow and go slow through any tight spots. The next time you come down to the chest, then reverse to the left, inhaling back, exhaling down. Next time the right ear comes to the right shoulder, we'll rest here. Walk the left hand back, shoulder rolls back, right hand gently assisting, gentle pressure overhead. Then bringing your chin straight down to the chest, hands behind for a gentle pressure, a couple of breaths. And to the other side, left ear resting towards the left shoulder, right hand walking back, shoulder rolls back and the left hand Gently assists overhead.
when you're ready, you can let that go. Inhale back to center. And if you need to shake your legs out if they're falling asleep. And then this one that we haven't done in a little bit that'll be good for hips and back is the cow face pose. So we're going to slide the left foot back by the right hip. The right foot back across to the left hip. About knee over knee with the right knee on top if you can. And interlacing fingers behind the back so you got the shoulders together. The heart open. And then you start to come forward and hopefully find a spot to rest your head on your knees. If not, you can use a little blanket or cushion, but ideally having the head rest so your neck can rest. And if you can feel some nice opening in your hips, just hang out here and breathe and relax. After this breath, you can start to draw yourself back up. Take a deep breath into the heart. And exhale, you can release the hands. We'll switch the legs. Kind of pulling that right foot back by the opposite left hip. Left foot across to the right hip. Knee over knee. Out. So you have your cow ears on the side and snout in the front. At least that's my theory of why it's called cow face pose, Gomokasana. And then you can interlace the fingers behind your back if that feels good. Otherwise, there's some different variations with the hands, but it's nice to train our shoulders to stay back because they're always trying to hunch up and forward. So. Come out and see if you can find a resting spot for your head on the knees or a pop. And then just hanging out, breathing for the rest of this minute. Of course, softening any unnecessary tension that might be hiding anywhere in the body. After this breath, you can start to roll back up. And I'm going to unwind the knees, bring the feet flat, a couple feet apart for a few gentle windshield wipers side to side just to neutralize the hip fluid. Because then we're going to take our hip opening a little deeper with something we also don't do very often called fire log pose, but I was doing this at the festival and it's pretty convenient, feels pretty good if this is available to you. So it's kind of like you're cross-legged and then I'm gonna bring the right ankle right on top of the left knee. Yeah. 
somewhat comfortable spot. So it's fire log. So these like leg over leg, those are your stacked logs. And then we're gonna do that same thing, kind of extending outwards, walking the hands out, and ideally if possible, bringing your head all the way down to the ground, or if you need to raise the ground up with a little block or a pillow, but find your resting spot right in the middle, just breathing here. You might notice it's a similar kind of posture to the pigeon or the sleeping swan in yin, except we don't have our leg back, so it kind of works on the spine, the hip a little differently, might be more accessible or less accessible. That's good. Just breathing into the belly and opening up any tight low back sacrum spots. Hanging out here a few more breaths. And after this last breath, keeping the head down and relaxed as you start to walk yourself back up. And we'll mindfully transition to the other side. If you need to, you know, if anything's getting tight, feel free to shake out a little bit. And for the other side, it's going to be left ankle on top of the right knee thigh area trying to stack leg parallel to the other leg over top and then extending out so you can you know play around if you want to do the um, fingers interlaced behind your back or just walking the hands forward but finding that resting spot for your head somewhere so your neck can relax and your face can relax and it's some really nice deep opening for the hips and low back especially and you can send that expansion of the breath down to the belly to help loosen any tension there two minutes If you feel any uh, intense sensations, you can also employ the ujjayi breathing with some throat constriction, that, that sighing sensation with long deep breath through your nose, and that will help calm the nerves, helps to slow the breath.
Kato Noe Lang Di Pet Keeping the head down as you start to walk the hands back and rise up. Bring the hands back behind the hips, feet flat, and just a few more gentle side to side massages to loosen up if any uh, irritation is there. Then tucking the legs back into your comfortable version of the cross-legged half lotus, easy pose, supasana. Roll the shoulders back. Let the shoulders go loose. We'll turn the palms face up in Gyan Mudra, first finger and thumb for a point of focus, circulating the energy back in as you form that circuit and joining Jupiter energy, the index finger with the thumb, with the self. It's abundance, consciousness, expanded awareness. This will be a good time for some more of our calming meditation breathing that five second inhale, little pause, and five, uh, eight second exhale. It's extending the exhale longer than the inhale that will calm the nerves, and kind of uh, calm any excess fire or stress with the uh, full moon and solstice approaching. So, exhaling the breath out. Once you're in your comfortable spot, beginning a slow inhale for one, two, three, four, five, and a long controlled exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and again inhaling gently for one, two, three, four, five. Exhaling two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Continue five second or five slow count inhale, eight count exhale.
finish this last round, exhaling. Draw your hands over your heart and take a deep breath in. Hold this breath and send yourself pure love and acceptance. Stay here as you exhale. And once again, inhale fully. Hold this breath. Feel your heartbeat welling up with compassion for yourself and for everyone who comes to mind, everyone in your life who needs it. Releasing that breath. And one last time, inhale fully. Hold and send each heartbeat out across the universe to all beings, all plants, animals, people, rocks, every being everywhere. And when you need to, you can exhale, releasing the hands down and just relaxing, breathing. want to offer one more restorative posture before final relaxation, which also could be your final relaxation, and legs up the wall. So if you have a little blanket or a mat, you can draw it up to a vertical surface. You want to get as close as you can, so a lot of times you go sideways and bring one hip all the way up till it's touching. Bring up one leg and the other leg. Roll the shoulder blades underneath the body. Usually palms are up, up like a foot away from the body. Um, feet more or less together and legs straight but keeping the sacrum low back down on the mat. And then I'll give you a few minutes to Relax and absorb all the benefits of Viparita Karasi, the uh, stress relieving, heart rate lowering, and healing rejuvenating qualities here as all that blood flow of oxygenated blood that's trapped in the legs comes down, especially healing for legs and back and also the equivalent of a half an hour or an hour of sleep and rejuvenating your mind. While you're relaxing here, I will share with you the poem of the day from Hafiz. For Tuesday, June 6th. This poem is called Energy in Sounds. As many times as a parrot might say any number of things, will that make them true for the bird? So it is with many utterances about spiritual matters from people. They just may never occur except in make-believe, which probably won't pay the rent. Harness speech. Let it become a windmill that can grind a harvest. There is a pristine energy in sounds that comes from certain depths that can split the atom. If you can control them perfectly, which would mean your words cease to harm and always uplift, or at least comfort, with the world so ripe for help. This is what our relationship is at times about, me increasing your power so that you can bake a special wheat that can feed the various longings a refined heart can know.
with your entire body, face, everything relaxed now. Just enjoy a couple more deep breaths. You may feel the pulse of the blood flow. I always feel it in the low back as it drains and heals there. But then you can hug your knees in towards your heart. And if you have room to circle the knees a little bit, get a little low back massage. Going one way and then reverse the other way with the knees. Give your knees a squeeze, hug them in. And next will be your final relaxation. So you could do legs up the wall, you could do a wide-legged legs up the wall, you could shimmy up your mat and lie flat in a traditional shavasana, or you could support with a, any type of cushion under your knees if they're sensitive, under your head or your back, um, finding your intuitively chosen comfortable shavasana, and just maybe rolling those shoulders underneath the body if they're not already, let the eyes roll back, the forehead soften, and the jaw go slack. Let each limb finger and toe soften into its natural place. Of course, the more still and more soft you are, the more healing can flow through.
while you're relaxing now, I encourage you again to give yourself some self-love, positive self-talk for completing your practice and taking care of the body, mind, spirit system such that you can be a presence of peace for all beings around you and thereby passing that on so they can pass that on and thereby uplifting the whole universe and all beings. Deepening the breath as you draw in some positive healing energy and some little movements to wrists and feet. And rubbing your palms together, rubbing your feet together. Give yourself one more hug and squeeze the knees and either rock forwards and back or onto your side if you prefer, but eventually coming mindfully to your cross-legged seat. And bring palms together to the heart for one sound of OM to seal our practice in the heart, to tune and merge with the sound current of the universe and send some peace, shanti, shanti, shanti to all beings, especially any ones who you don't like, who you're working on forgiving. Uh, deep breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Just like we're all part of life, we're all a part of the same world. We all have the same life force. Differences in appearance, body, mind, but we do all have access to the same universal consciousness and we share the same home. So the same light and love that animates my form is within you like it's little sparks off of that one central fire of the universe. So, the light and love in me salutes that within you. Namaste. Namaste. I know the Yoga Wellbeing uh, June newsletter just went out this morning. We got all the nice outdoor classes at the Park of Roses with Cipra Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So check those out and put those on your calendar if you want to catch that. ones are done. So the, just the uh, pranayama breathing workshops with Kanchan, Saturdays, June 10th, 17th, and 24th. And only virtual classes during Red, White, and Boom on July 3rd, closed on July 4th. 
and I'm coming to Columbus for the June 18th, uh, which is a Sunday movement medicine event. Um, it's at the church where they do the ecstatic dance um, down like Maderi, I want to say. I used to live over there like by Tompkins, by Hudson, and Indianola kind of area. And uh, there's going to be yoga, acro yoga, I'm doing kundalini at 8, cacao ceremony at 7, lots of different uh, activities and DJs and food, vegan food. It's all kinds of cool stuff um, all day into the evening um, when I'm also doing a sound healing at like 9. So uh, check out my postings and stuff for that and my Eventbrite link will get me uh, a kickback with that if you want to check that out. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited. It's like getting really close to summer and feeling really summery. Some cool stuff about to yeah. come down the pike and nice events, nice camping weather. It was, that was that was much warmer uh, to camp this past weekend than it was a month ago. It was like when when the sun comes up and just starts heating up the tent and like it's blazing hot at like seven thirty eight in the morning and it just gets you right up. <laughs>